<laughs> Alright. Hey everybody, this is Clayton Olson and Jack Butler. And uh, we're having a cup of tea. And we are going to be in the question tonight of Are Good Men Hard to Find? Mm. It's a question we hear a lot. It's also a statement. It's a, good it's, men are hard to find. Good men are hard to find, yeah. yeah. And Or the question of where of all the good men gone. Isn't that a song? Isn't that a song lyric as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good totally. Men. Cheryl Crow, right? Uh, maybe. I'm not exactly sure, but I know it's a song lyric. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to unpack this a little bit and find out what's the, what's the kind of truth in this territory or what's really mm. going on when women are in in that question right because mm-hmm. I'm imagining if if I'm in the reality of good men are hard to find probably I've had some disappointments mm. probably I'm feeling a bit resigned maybe I've got some pain based on previous relationships and I'm sort of it's almost the question of like is relationship worth it or are, are good relationships mm. out there and are possible mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so to get right to the essence of this question or to kind of look at it in a different frame would be to say you know which men are worth investing in. Yeah. Right? I think that's one way that we can approach the question. It's an, in, that's a really interesting spin on it because it is, it's almost questioning then, well, wait a second, what, it's almost making the assumption that they're actually good men in front of you everywhere. And the real question is, is can you see them? And uh, how do you know when one's in front of you? Right. Yeah. Can you make the discernment? Mm-hmm. Of this is a good man, or this is not a good man. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm gonna say just right now that I I don't believe that all the good men are taken. Sure. Uh huh. I believe that there's many good men that are single, and if it seems like what you're running up against is uh, men that aren't good for you, and the relationships end up repeating themselves over and over again, it might not be that there's a limited supply externally, mm-hmm. but rather there's something that you are continually looking for. And you're finding it, but it's not necessarily what you want. But you are looking for it, and that's why you're finding it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll often say this, that bringing vulnerability to your relationships is important. And that bringing vulnerability isn't a guarantee that you'll be with a good man. But not bringing vulnerability, I -hmm. think, is some kind of guarantee that you won't be with a good man. Can you connect the dots for anybody that's watching, and even myself here, why would bringing vulnerability to a dating scenario or into the dating territory, yes. what, what about bringing vulnerability as a woman would allow them to be able to find a good man or to be able to distinguish a good man? Yeah, yeah. So when I'm saying being vulnerable, part of what I'm talking about is having your heart online. Mm. And if your heart is online and a man isn't good to that or able to be with that, my view is he's probably not your man. Mm. So you're actually giving an opportunity for a guy to be a good man. If you're like saying, hey, here's my heart, Mm. take good care of it, Mm -hmm. right? There's a risk there, right? There's a Mm. risk that if you haven't discerned that it's a good man, you might might get hurt. Mm. But if you're not willing to risk getting hurt, you're not willing to risk putting your heart on the line. And I think it's when you put your heart on the line that you really find out whether a man's showing up for you or not. Hmm. Because that, I think, is the ultimate gift that you give a man, is, is your heart. You know what's fascinating? That's, that's really a great way of putting it. And there's a metaphor that comes to mind when I hear you say that. And it's, uh, it's almost like if I was at a group gathering and I laid a bunch of money out on the table, and had a security camera watching it. Yes. And I saw who walked away with the money versus the ones who didn't versus the ones who, when no one's looking, they still behaved in a way that was like, that had integrity. Um, I'd know who the good people were. Yes. Right, I'd know who the, um, the people honest, that are trustworthy and the ones that aren't. Totally. But unless I'm willing to risk that money, right, I'm not actually putting myself in a position to be able to find that information out. So yes. What I'm hearing is that finding a good man is your ability to find a good man is equally proportionate to your ability to risk something in your interactions. I think there's truth in that. Yeah. Yeah. 
and you may not, um, you know, to follow your metaphor, you mm -hmm. may not put your life savings on the table. Right. 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 But you may be willing to put a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. And some people say, oh, I couldn't afford to lose a couple hundred bucks. Mm. But what, what do you risk in not risking a couple hundred bucks is you, you, you lose the upside. The upside here is a great relationship. Yeah. Right. And show me any asset that's better than a great relationship. I think you're going to mm. struggle. Mm -hmm. I think it's the ultimate asset. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's worth being willing to risk a little bit and hey, you might blow a couple hundred bucks, right. but, but what you stand to gain. So you might be able to risk enough of your, revealing enough of your emotional territory of what's going on for you at a deeper level. Um, or even being able to say to a man like, you know, I notice I'm really drawn to you and I wanna um, see what's really here in relationship, mm. right? That's, there's mm -hmm. a kind of vulnerability there. It's like, wow, I'm declaring that I'm interested in you. Yeah, I, I like think, you. I think something's yeah. here. Right, you know, and that doesn't preclude a man doing that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a little bit of putting some skin in the game there that yes. allows the man then to react in a certain way. Yes, and um, I was recently talking to a friend, and I think this is a a, a great example of what we're talking about here. And uh, she was uh, she had been going on a couple dates with this guy, who whenever they hung out, they had uh, a real connection. Yep. And there was an intimacy that they shared and they hadn't gotten physical yet. But when they weren't hanging out with each other physically, he was completely radio silent. And right. she was wondering, okay, wait a second, what's going on here? Is this guy actually like me? Is he just dating other women? But when he's with me, is he playing me? Because he acts like he's so interested in me when we're hanging uh. out, right? And so she could jump to all these conclusions. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, what's going on? Is it is it A, B, or C? Is it that he, you know, maybe he doesn't like me. Maybe yes. he's got other women in his life. Maybe he's not ready for a long term relationship. And it, all of his behavior is really confusing, and you can draw all these assumptions around what he's doing. But I encouraged her to put some skin in the game. Yes. The skin that she put in the game was just simply revealing what her experience was and asking for some clarity. So I think what she ended up saying to him was something to the effect of, um, hey, I really enjoy talking with you and um, I'm curious as to why I don't hear from you in between Brilliant. dates. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to stay in contact, but I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for. That's what you want. Brilliant. And it, what was beautiful is that that's kind of like putting the $100 bill on the table. Yes. Because what ended up happening is it completely opened up a new territory for him where he started as he was completely ignorant of the fact that he yeah. that his lack of communication was causing an impact yes um, and in fact what I would surmise as a man is he was probably so into her that he didn't want to mess things up and come off looking needy desperate or too pushy huh. so he tried to play it cool but in playing it cool yeah. she started having all these assumptions that came up yeah but by her taking a step forward and risking a little by yes. letting him know, by, by actually respecting the connection enough, respecting him enough to trust that he is noble enough, maybe has enough integrity to be able to handle a yes. little bit of her vulnerability. Yes. Um, she was able to get a really clear reflection of who he is because what ended up happening is he came back around, apologized, they got on the same page, and now who knows what's going to happen. They got over that hump. Yes. And I love that. I think so many women can, because they don't want to put skin in the game. Yes. Look, this happens for men too, but this video is for women. Yes. Right? Um, they, they don't want to ante up. They don't want to put something in the game to where they could might feel like they could get rejected. Yes. And they end up letting go of guys. They end up thinking, oh, these aren't good men. But she got to see where this guy really was by just putting a little bit of vulnerability into the mix. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I would encourage that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I will say this, that a lot of the women for whom this video may be most relevant, um, are women that maybe potentially defend their hearts mm. and that that's even the kind of the role that they sometimes assume in relationship mm. is that their, their desire to be independent and not need a man and strong and I take care of myself mm -hmm. that there's actually a way that that is not really allowing a good man into your life right mm -hmm. um, I used to play soccer at a reasonable level you know mm -hmm. part of what you, we do is 
you would make movements deliberately away from the ball in order to create space so that then the ball could deliver and the man could arrive. Oh, wow. So creating, creating yeah. space in soccer is a big mm. part of the game. Mm. And it's the same, I think, in relationship, right? If you want to invite a relationship into your life, you've got to kind of create space for it. You mm. know? So if you've got a lot of exes that are hanging around and nothing's really going to go anywhere in a relationship but you haven't sh shut it off, yeah. you don't have the space for a a good man to just step into mm -hmm. your life mm -hmm. right he's got to like fight through all this stuff to get there yeah and in the same way if your heart is defended mm -hmm. and there's no acknowledgement of the way that i'm kind of close to men or i feel like if i'm open to men that i'm being too vulnerable or too weak or too feminine or there's some kind of narrative mm -hmm. or perspective there that actually isn't allowing a good man to more easily come into your life yeah. right? you don't get to control exactly which men come into your life at which time right mm -hmm. there's grace mm -hmm. there's being open to life but you want to stack the odds. Yeah. You want to do, you know, control the controllables, everything that's on your side of the fence. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. yeah, you don't want to be in an unconscious role. Right. It's actually subtly but quite clearly not allowing good men to come in your life. And what will it allow? It'll allow mm -hmm. all these other male archetypes that you don't really want, right? The mm -hmm. player, mm -hmm. the pursuer, mm -hmm. the, the game player, the... Yeah, you know, the one who's got to really work, 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 work to get anywhere with you. Mm -hmm. And just to really nail this down, what I hear you saying, and which I, which I think is really important to pick up here, is that if you are playing a certain role or you are having any type of strategies to guard your heart where you feel like you're playing games or not being direct in some way, not being completely honest with yourself in your interactions with men, uh, you will call forth the reciprocal in men to come up as well. Yes. Um, so if there's an authenticity in you, uh, you will find inauthenticity an equal level, if not more, right. in the men that you choose and the men that you date. Yeah. So part of finding a good man is kind of becoming, I, I was going to say, a good woman, um, but in yeah. whatever realm that means to you, whatever that means to you, yeah. um, seems is true. coming in line with yourself, coming more in authenticity with yourself. Um, and we've got a webinar coming up about this. We do. Do you want to tell a little bit about that? It sounded like you were on a roll talking about the roles, pun yeah. intended. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got a, a webinar that's called uh, The Three Keys to Being Relationship Ready. Um, so again, Relationship Ready is doing everything that's on your side of your, the fence to really allow you to attract and keep a high quality man. So the, the yeah. aim of the webinar is really to support you. Perhaps you're single, perhaps you're dating some men, but there's nothing particularly serious, you know, or maybe you've just started seeing someone and you want to maximize your chances of it, of it going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Then I really encourage you to come on this webinar. Uh, it's free and it's mm -hmm. probably the most information packed production I've been part of. We put so many hours into this. Yeah. <laughs> we it, put so many hours it's super into the potent, content. Actually. Yeah. 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 And for a free webinar, I mean, it's just, it's an hour to 90 minutes of just solid content all the way through to really help you get unstuck and begin to make conscious some of the things that you may be doing unconsciously that are standing in the way uh, and blocking intimacy and blocking yourself from progressing deeper with a man. Um, to Jack's point, we talk about two roles specifically uh, yep. in one of the keys. Um, and then we talk about a couple other keys as well that are uh, just as critical, if not more, uh, that move deeper into your own heart. And yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. almost like if there are any blocks for you to being the kind of woman that can attract a good man, that's what we're going after. Right. Like they're the blocks we're removing. Any, any places that you are posturing but not being authentic. Any places that you're playing a game that invites a guy to play a game. We're yep. kind of cutting right through that and get into the, the real value of how can you be fully yourself in a heart open and vulnerable way that is actually super attractive to the right kind of guy. Yeah. And make sure that you're investing your time and energy, which is precious, right? Time mm -hmm. is the most, time and attention, most valuable resources we have. Mm -hmm. How are you investing them in the right direction? Yep. You know, how would you know that? Yep. And like Jack says, we're tackling the highest leverage points in this webinar, meaning uh, the way that you see yourself as well as your beliefs and uh, uncovered some new distinctions around relating to men because uh, you might have found, I mean, if you've been watching videos on YouTube or reading articles, there's a lot of tips and tactics on how to talk to men and uh, 
perhaps strategies of dating and maybe ways to ignore somebody and playing games. But in the end, what it comes down to is none of that stuff actually works if you do not have a solid self image and you do not have the right belief set in place uh, around uh, how to create love and how to create a relationship. In fact, you don't even need strategies and you don't even need tactics when you get the when you get clear on where you may have been blocking yourself in the past. I mean, isn't that right? Mm-hmm. Like the strat- the strategy, the tactics, all of that stuff is secondary to coming from the right place, speaking from the right place, yes, being in the right place when you're in the presence of a man. Yes, um, I love that you say that. Yeah. Because truly, you can get some strategies and some tactics, and then what happens? You get into an interaction, and next thing you know, boom, you're in deep water because you can't possibly get a strategy and a tactic for every single situation, especially when you really start to get into deeper intimacy with a guy. What is gonna allow you to uh, swim in those depths is what we begin to uncover in this webinar. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanna invite you, we wanna invite you to be a part of it. You can click the link below this video. We've got a registration page set up. Uh, You can pick a time that works for you. And uh, we encourage you to grab a notebook maybe a glass of wine or a cup of coffee, depending on when you decide to watch it. And uh, nighttime tea. Right, nighttime tea too, if you want to stay away from anything addictive. I mean, in a way, all that to say, this is a real great opportunity to invest in yourself. Yeah. Uh, Like I would challenge you to be fully present on on the webinar with us and not experience some kind of insight that has transformational potential. Mm. Like that's what we're really going for. Like if we're, Mm laying it out, that's that's our intention that we're holding for you coming on this webinar with us, is for you really to clearly distinguish things that have not been clarified or distinguished in yourself that are really blocking you getting what it is that you want. And that's on the assumption that what you want is a loving, what we're calling a conscious relationship, where a relationship where you can show up as yourself and use the relationship as a vehicle for growth. Mm. So this is, you know, not just finding a high quality man, this is actually a high quality relationship. Yeah. Like we're, we're kind of raising the bar on what we see as possible in the domain of relationship. Absolutely. Um, And none of that to intimidate you. That's just to like really encourage you into this territory, encourage you into being increasingly vulnerable in this territory as a way of attracting something deeper and more lasting and more fulfilling to you, right? Because when we strip it all down, why be in relationship? Why? Because typically most of us are more fulfilled if we're in a loving relationship that works. Mm. Yeah, and all levels. Yeah. Yeah. So join us. Yep. And if any of this sounds fascinating to you, go ahead and click the link below this video, register for the webinar, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on. Yeah. Thanks for being with us. Take care.